one of the consequences of the Protestantization of the Catholic Church is that we are reaching a point where everyone believes what they want to believe. And within the Catholic Church, there are so many people, priests, bishops, who believe correctly and are faithful to the dogma, but others, not at all. That's what the Protestantization is. It is not that the Church has approved Protestant dogmas. It has not happened, fortunately. But it is that each one does what he wants. For example, I read of a spiritual director, a formation in the seminary of the German diocese, who said that Christ was obsolete. That since Christ was obsolete, he was a man of his times. He had to dispense him with them. And here, nothing happens. This man continues forming priests. I don't know how many seminarians their seminary has, but of course, it is the bishop's responsibility to let him continue in his position after he has said that. But not only is the church treated by the Protestantism, but also the laicization by the secularization. And this secularization is perhaps even more subtle, less evident than the other. Therefore, possibly more dangerous. A secularist church is a church that has forgotten the reasons, the motives for which things must be done. Things are done for humanity, and it seems there are, shouldn't be another reason. This comes from very far away. I still remember when I was a theology student, it has already been raining a lot, and a professor criticized Mother Teresa of Kakura, then of course was still alive, although she had already received the Nobel Peace Prize. She was criticized because she said, Logically, the professor was a Marxist and a communist. He said that she was only good for patching up, for covering up holes, that you had to go to the roots of the things, you had to create the revolution, because that way, only in that way, will the problem will be solved at the root. And he further argued that to do things for God was to offend men. It was as if a man was not enough, as if he was not enough to help a person in need because that person needed it and not because you had to turn to God as your primary or at least completely motivation with which, I repeat to us, future priests, at least I was ordained. He was telling us, he was teaching us the works of charity were not useful, only political revolution was useful, and moreover communism. And he was also telling us either we did things for themselves or out of humanity or better not to do them because it was to offend people. This is secularization. Secularization is the invasion of another atheist ideology which has deeply marked the recent past and the present of the Church, which has led us, for example, not to speak of eternal life, because if we did, according to the communists, we will become the opium of the people. God in heaven will already pay for the many sufferings you are going through here on earth, and then we became the opium, the drug, the poppy blossom, the many people not to fight to improve their condition on earth, because God will already pay them in heaven. So there was no need to talk about heaven. Talking about heaven was anti-revolutionary, terrible, secularization also affect the motivations. I remember before I entered the seminary, when I was at the university one day, talking to a classmate, she was a Catholic, just like me, a Catholic practicing. So it was not so strange and rare as today. And this classmate told me, with much sincerity, we talk about why we had to help the poor, which I was questioned that, at least, when I was 18 years old, we feel bitterly in the Spain of the time, which has still under the regime 
of you, General Franco. Why do we need to help the poor? I still no con mala very little train. No bad formation, unfortunately, but with little, said men, because we had to have compassion, and she answered me, and if you don't have it, and if you don't have it, and if that doesn't say anything to you, that is, if it is, says something to you, but if you don't have it, what if you don't have it, those human motivations, what if they are not there, or if they are turned out, or if they are just a few? I recently received an email from a person who was molested by a family member when she was a child, and she told me about the terrible hate she felt. What if you don't have the motivation to forgive? What if you dislike and you cannot help it? People who are different in color of skin, from another country, from another religion. What do you do to them when your motivations are no ideal, very strong, lasting, inexhaustible? What do you do then? Well, to a mother who loves her child to the point of giving her life for him well, the mothers of before, because now there is all kinds, many yes, many others will kill their children in their own wombs, but a mother on the past of the present to continue loving her child until she gives her life for them. What if this mother gets tired? Oh no, but a mother never gets tired. Are you sure she never gets tired? It gets in the weight of a mother who loves her child madly, telling her teenager son that he is no longer as nice to love as when he was a baby, and she holds him in her arms, telling him, I love you very much, but of course, if it weren't for Christ, and her husband, they love each other very much, very, very much. They marry very much in love. But the years have passed, they have evolved differently, they have gotten to each other better, they have stopped seeing the good things, maybe the physical one is not the attractive anymore. So when there is no human motivations, what do we do? What a trap, what a great deception, how they have seduced us into separate us from Christ, to stop talking about heaven and to stop talking about that everything, everything has to be done for the Lord, for the love of the Lord, out of gratitude to the Lord, that is root for you, Jesus, out of gratitude to you, because there will be many, many things that we do because they come within us, well, like everyone else, and there should be Catholics with a great humanitarian feeling, and another with less, and others with very little. And there will be people incapable of holding a grudge, incapable. And there will be people who find it very hard to forgive. But we leave our behavior at the mercy of these feelings alone. And often even nobles of the strongest feelings pass away. Faith and instantly disappear. Firm love and in divorce. And purpose of helping others very, very often, as you know, well, in the places where they have volunteers, very often it is, look, today I cannot go because I'm tired, because another plan has come up. And then you have the elders who, in a, every way, need to be taken care of. For the money, you wouldn't miss it, because it's your job. Because when you do it for free, because it is free, it's often no link to the end amore, but to the desire to do it. When I don't feel like it, I don't do it. We have left the human being at the mercy of his states of his happiness and sentimentalism that makes that man easily manipulate. They may be applied whether he is a man or a woman. That verse of the old opera, 
la donna è mobile, qual fiore al vento. And in this case, it's not a problem of the donna, of the woman, but of the human being. We have the cane mobile, fragile, qual fiore al vento, like a flower overcome by the wind, because we have not put the roots in Christ. For you, Christ, out of gratitude to you, and if it's not hard for me, so much better. He does not spoil or take away, but always adds up, doing things and motivations for the Lord. But if He costs me, that's where the difference is very evident. For you, Jesus, for you, Almond, for you, forgiveness, for you, faithfulness, for you, and also for you, to embrace the cross, which at times is so, so difficult to embrace. For you, Jesus, and from what it is inside, from what is in the heart, as Jesus says today in the Gospel, that is where one gets from there, from what's inside the root, one gets the strength and the fruits. So be it.